Hello there, everybody. Dan Calloway here again, and thanks for watching. Um, coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. I'm in my favorite Arch Linux system again today, and I want to show you um, how I go about using the command line terminal in Arch Linux to securely copy files from my personal cloud down to my Linux system using a secure shell uh, command called SCP for secure copy which creates a secure shell tunnel, SSH tunnel, uh, encrypting all those files on the download process and so that way th anybody that's tr trying to or, or would like to uh, you know use Wireshark or another application in order to uh, sniff packets and grab those files or uh, manipulate the files would not be able to do so because it would be encrypted. Even if they could uh, grab those, they couldn't uh, do anything with them. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm in my terminal, I mean in my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and right click and get in the terminal. Uh, I'm going to bring this up to full screen. Now my uh, personal cloud is the remote server that I'm getting into and it is uh, located at 192.168.1.157 on my network, the wireless network. Uh, the IP address of this local machine, I've got a, an alias I have here to find that out. It's called MyLIP and the IP address is 192.168.1.36. Okay, So let's go ahead and uh, first of all, before I do this, let me make sure that the SSH uh, daemon service is running here in Linux and uh, it may not be. So let me issue a command to do that and the command that I need to issue since this is systemd is system ctl for system control status sshd for ssh daemon. Alright so good thing I did uh, looking at it it is inactive dead and disabled okay so I need to issue a command to start the server and enable it. And so let me go ahead and start the daemon. I'm prompted for my root password. All right, so the daemon is started. I can confirm that using the up arrow for status. See that I uh, am running an active server now for SSH. However, it's still disabled, which means it won't survive a reboot, will not come up and automatically start that service on uh, a reboot of the system or a uh, boot up of the system. All right, so we need to fix that. So let's go ahead and issue a command to enable this service, and that's systemctl enable sshd, prompted once again. Since I am starting a server. And then you'll notice it creates a symlink here from Etsy system D system multi user target wants sshd.service to user lib system D system ssh daemon service, all right, which is normal. That's required. So let's go ahead and get a status here again. And now we can see that it is active and it is running and enabled, which means it will auto start on uh, a reboot, which is very good. Let's clear the screen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and SSH up to my personal cloud now that the service is running locally. And to do that, I have an account up there, a root account in Debian Linux. That's what my personal cloud, six terabyte personal cloud runs on, Debian Linux. And so I'm going to do an SSH to the root account at 192.168.1.157. Should get prompted for the password. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And I got connected. All right. And so now I'm going to change directory to shares public to go out on the public side of my personal cloud. I'm going to go ahead and issue a, uh, a long uh, listing, human readable. And you can see that I've got several directories here and uh, on my personal side. I want to get into that shared pictures directory and so to do that I'm going to change directory to and I'll have to use a quote because you have a space in between there shared pictures directory and let's do a listing again As you can see I've got several files and folders I'm interested in this one 
directory right here called bridges. All right, you can barely see it because it's colored green. Um, and so let me go ahead and change into that directory. All right, and let's do a listing of that. See how many files are there. Quite a few files there uh, in this particular directory. Uh, so let me clear the screen again. And I'm in the bridges directory. Now the command that I need to, to use to copy files down from this directory to my local system is called secure copy. So it's an SCP command. And I want to copy all files, not just one or, or more, all files. Okay, so star dot star, and then I have a an account here on the local system user account called Data Pioneer at uh, 192.168.1.36, I believe, was the IP address colon, and then where do I want to put those files? I want to put those in the forward slash home Data Pioneer pictures directory. Okay. So it's going to copy the entire, all of those files down, uh, not the directory itself though, just the files, all right, to that pictures directory on my local system. All right, so if I hit the enter key on the keyboard, it's going to prompt me for Data Pioneer's password. I'm going to put that in. And there we go. So it's securely copying all these files. It's giving me 100% on each file. Some of them are being copied down instantly, less than a second. Some of them are taking one second. Some of them are taking less than a second to copy down. So it's going to copy all those files down to my local system and put those in the pictures directory. All right, so it completed the process. You can see that all of these files are 100%. Here it gives the size of the file, the, the length of time it took to copy. So with a 100% status, I know that all the files got copied down. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exit here and break the connection. So I logged out, lost the connection. Now I'm back on my local system, Data Pioneer, home directory. So I'm going to clear the screen one more time. And uh, I can change the directory into the pictures directory. And there they are. There are all the files that I just copied down including some of the other files that were also there as well. Okay, So this was a video on how to secure copy files from a remote server down to your local Linux system using the SCP command. And uh, if you want to go back and review the video again to look at that command and see what was required, be my guest to do that. Uh, leave comments. Please subscribe to my channel. And uh, let me know if there's anything that else that we'd like to see. I'll be getting into the terminal here quite a bit in the coming weeks uh, on my Linux Unix tech channel. So you guys have a nice day and thank you for watching.